OK. Now, I've been driving around for a couple of hours in the sort of stop-start city traffic that you get when you are taking the kids to school or going to work, and I've done 41.7 miles. And what I'm going to do now is fill it up to the brim again. You've got to brim it so it's all just spurting out. That's going to be... Come on. That's, that's it. 20.85 litres. And now... We have to do the maths. OK, that's um, 20.85 litres. Now, we'll convert that from Euro babble into English by dividing it by 4.546 equals 4.58 gallons. We'll make a note of that. 4.5864 gallons. Okie doke. Now then. We did 41.7 miles divided by 4.5864 miles to the gallon coming up, everybody. Nine! Nine miles to the gallon! I tell you, people who have off-road cars are stupid and mad. They should be driven from the roads and birched to within an inch of their lives. Off-road cars are daft, antisocial and idiotic, and the people who drive them are fools. This is mine. It's a four-litre, 24-valve, six-cylinder, two-and-a-half-ton... What's the word? Monster. It was designed to take on Africa, but I use it here, in Oxfordshire. To do the school run, it costs £5,000 a year in petrol alone. £5,000 out of taxed income. Oh, let's get you in. That's obscene. That makes the Yorkshireman in me absolutely livid and sick at the waste. So, you may be asking, why do I not change it for something a little more reasonable. Well, I need an off-roader because where I live, the routes into town are so congested that the best way to school is down here. And I'm very sorry, but this is the fastest way to school. Obviously, it's a bit of a bore getting out to open the gates, but at least it's a bit of fresh air and some exercise. Night. Yeah. Bye. Have you go. Exploiting the right to roam can save 20 minutes a day, and that's worthwhile. But more important than this is the safety. It's the sort of vehicle that if somebody hits you, you you'd be very confident that strapped in here, you know, you wouldn't be hurt. I just prefer being in something beefy. I mean, I did have a, a, an accident a few months ago. Somebody went into the side of me and I actually hardly noticed. I don't think you'd, you'd knock this over in a high. It helps on the country lanes being up high. And that's nice. Means you can look down on lesser mortals in their ordinary cars. But it means that the off-roader has to have a high centre of gravity. And that's... not so nice. If you need to take emergency action on a motorway, it's more likely to roll over than a normal car. And then we have braking. Or rather, we don't. So, all things considered, the off-road car is not good at avoiding accidents. What, however, it's very good at 
is dealing with them once they happen.